So we can't really talk about positive reinforcement training without also discussing our Lima ethical framework. So when we're deciding what tools to use to accomplish our training goals, uh, this ethical framework really helps us kind of have some clarity over, you know, what we can feel good about, what our options are, and help us make decisions um, when we are confronted with, with a training challenge. So in this presentation, we'll go through what the Lima framework is and how to apply it. And I hope that this will serve you guys well as you go forward with your training and you're moving on to different things with your horse. You can come back to this to help guide you uh, in your training. So Lima stands for least intrusive and minimally aversive. So when we're deciding between training techniques, they fall on a spectrum of aversiveness and a spectrum of how intrusive they are into the animal's life and well-being. So when we're, when we're trying to make a decision on what tool to use in what scenario, our goal when we're operating under Lima is to pick the option that is going to be the least intrusive and the least aversive for the animal that we're training. We've got a couple of definitions that I want to cover before we dive into the specific Lima hierarchy and framework, uh, just so that we're all on the same page when we get there. So the first one is antecedent. Uh, we talk about this a little bit more in our setting setting the stage presentation, but we'll, we'll go through it here briefly. Um, the antecedent just means what happens before the behavior happens. So it might be a cue or a command, or it might be different things in the environment. I put this little bag of chips here. Um, if any of you have dogs or horses who hear the rustling of the bag as you open a, a chip bag or a plastic bag with, with treats or something in it, and they know what that means and they come running, the, the crinkling of that bag is the antecedent, and then the behavior would be the animal coming over. Uh, differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior is also something we'll talk about in the training hierarchy. And this is when we are going to reinforce a behavior that we do want as a replacement for a behavior that we don't want. So I put the scales here because that old behavior that was previously being reinforced still holds its history with it and we're going to stop reinforcing that behavior and we're going to start reinforcing a new one instead and over time we're going to shift the balance on those scales so that that new behavior is weighed more heavily has a better reinforcement history behind it and hopefully that means the animal is then going to choose that behavior over the one that we're trying to get rid of and then our last definition here is for extinction extinction is permanently removing uh, a reinforcer to get rid of a behavior that we don't want. So the, the animal maybe was getting reinforced for this behavior previously. Now we're going to stop reinforcing this behavior and the animal is going to figure out that this is no longer being reinforced. So uh, the note here is that this option doesn't really give our learner a clear alternative behavior to choose. We're just saying, no, this one's not getting reinforced anymore, tough luck. And so I put the dinosaur here, first of all, because dinosaurs are extinct, but also this is an angry dinosaur. And a little note about extinction is it can, also, it can often cause a lot of frustration and it can cause what we often refer to as an extinction burst, which is a big burst of high energy or big or angry even behavior that happens as the learner is kind of navigating the concept that this behavior is no longer being reinforced. So we, we need to note that this is often a frustrating process and you'll see in the next slide that's why it's going to fall where it does on our on our list of options that we can we can apply to training okay so with our with our lima training we're primarily going to be using positive reinforcement training when we're trying to create new behaviors or modify behaviors 
The thing with Lima is it allows for the use of other methods when necessary, but we're going to do our best to follow what we call the humane hierarchy. And the humane hierarchy is what is shown in this little graphic to the right. And those definitions that we just covered, I think you'll see them come up again here. Um, so let's go through let's go through all of the options and kind of uh, why they fall where they do. So before we even get to positive reinforcement training, you'll notice that we have two other options that we want to check first. So exit number one is always going to be wellness, nutritional, physical. So we always want to make sure that that base is covered first. And if we notice a problem behavior, a behavior we want to get rid of that we don't like, we always want to make sure we're checking this exit one first. So if your horse is starting to bite and maybe previously they weren't biting, but now they're biting when say you girth them up, we always want to double check that that is not a physical issue first. And so that's why that, that falls first on our, on our humane hierarchy. The second thing we want to make sure is in place is our antecedent arrangements. So even when we are going to then use positive reinforcement training, we want our antecedent arrangements in place first as well. But sometimes simply changing our antecedent arrangement is enough to change behavior in a way that, you know, serves our purposes. So that's the next one on our list. Our next option is in positive reinforcement training. Our entire class is about that, so I'm not going to dive uh, any more deeply into it. We're going to move along. If positive reinforcement is not an option in and of itself, we can then fall back on differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior. So remember back to our slide with the definitions, this is going to be something that we use to fade out an old behavior that we do not want and replace it with a new behavior that we do want. So let's say that... Uh, your horse will go back to your horses biting at you when you're girthing them up. Say we've covered all of the wellness issues, any health issues, we've covered all of our other options, and now we still have the, the biting behavior even though the other stuff has been taken care of. A differential reinforcement of an alternate behavior might be um, teaching the horse to touch a target that is in, on the other side from the human when the saddle is brought out so or when the girth starts to be cinched so that the horse is maintaining its nose on this target as you're going through the saddling and girthing process so keeping their nose on the target would mean that it's not possible for them to bite the human and so we could reinforce this new behavior and get rid of the biting behavior in that way. When that's not an option, we move on to our next exit, which if you'll notice has a yellow yield sign. So all of our options up to this point have had a green sign, which tells us they're pretty safe choices to use in most situations. They tend to be uh, ethical choices. When we get to our yellow yield sign, that's because these three things, extinction, negative reinforcement, and negative punishment, can be used ethically and they can also be used unethically. So you want to pause before going here to make sure that the situation kind of warrants this and that we're using it in an appropriate way that's not going to be damaging to our horse um, or whoever else we're working with. So uh, extinction, negative reinforcement, negative punishment, they're all kind of a similar level here. So they're at the same exit. And I just want to remind you, extinction is different from differential reinforcement of the alternative behavior because it doesn't give the horse uh, the alternate behavior. It just says this old behavior no longer works, uh, deal with it, rather than giving them you know, the new option of what we would like to replace the behavior with. So it can be much more frustrating than our previous option. But there are situations that you might run into where that's really the only option that you have and, and that's the exit you need to take on our little road here. And then the final piece here that has the red sign and it has a little blockade is positive punishment. We want to save this as a last resort. You really need to stop and think hard before you resort to this for training. So um, hopefully that kind of makes sense as we navigate through. And on our next slide, we're going to talk about when it might be ethical to move beyond our green-lighted options into 
the the yellow sign and our red stop sign here with punishment at the end. As much as we want to be kind to our horses and ethical all the time, there are times when moving on to more aversive methods, I would say is absolutely ethical and warranted. And and these times are on the slide. So when the animal's health and safety is at risk. So maybe we have time sensitive vet care or hoof care. It has to happen, but our training, our horse is not ready for it in a training situation. So we might kind of have to force them to deal with it uh, based on the situation. And that might be an ethical choice. It might not be too, right? It's kind of a, a pros and cons we have to weigh. Emergencies and accidents, it's the same thing. When, when we're prioritizing health and safety, sometimes we're going to have to do what we have to do uh, in that moment, even if it's not a choice we would usually make if we were training in a normal situation. The same thing for human health and safety. Accidents and emergencies, do what you have to do to keep yourself safe too. So it, it may be a potential accident or emergency, right? You're preventing an accident by uh, taking, taking action that maybe you wouldn't choose in a different situation. So the severity of the risk should correlate to the aversiveness that we resort to. If, if we're at risk of getting injured and we have to do something punishing to the horse to prevent that injury, I think that that could very well be an ethical choice. But if we're annoyed by the horse uh, pawing in his stall, perhaps, and it's not damaging anything or himself, it's just making this clanging noise and it's annoying, that probably wouldn't warrant a punishment in my opinion. We should maybe train that with a differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior because we could do that. We could replace that pawing with something we want more and teach the horse how to act when, say, usually they're pawing when food time is happening, when they're all being fed. So we could teach them to stand still in order to get their food and get rid of the pawing that way. So it's, it's going to be very dependent on the individual situation, your own per personal ethical standards. So um, that's why this is a framework, right? There are no hard and fast rules. It's just guidelines. And then you use the framework to apply to whatever situation you end up finding yourself in. So hopefully that is helpful for you guys. Um, I know sometimes you get really deep into the theoreticalness of ethics and then you're like, how do I apply this into real life? But basically in terms of real life application, what I want you to take away from this is that we want to use positive reinforcement as much as possible when we're intentionally training behaviors. There are times when we might be confronted with a situation where we're in a hurry or time sensitive or um, whatever reason where we might need to then move towards negative reinforcement or negative punishment. And then there are also times in extreme circumstances where someone's health or safety is at risk when positive punishment would then also be appropriate. So we just need to um, give ourselves a little bit of grace, right? If we're going to make mistakes. We're going to be harsher than we wanted to. We're going to unintentionally punish things sometimes. But when we're making our plans, when we're intentionally uh, doing our training sessions with our horses, we want to stay in the green zone as much as possible. So I'm going to leave you guys with that to kind of think, chew on a little bit, ponder it, and I will see you in the next video.